Sure. Okay, does everybody see that picture? Nod your head if you see it. Yes, okay. yes. All right, so this is kind of what I'm gonna use as a guide. I'm not gonna paint this picture. Uh, I think I've said, I think I may have said last time, I, I very rarely paint exactly what's in a picture. Uh, I'm always kind of moving stuff around, taking stuff out, uh, maybe even adding stuff in, uh, you know, to make the composition something that I like. Uh, so, you know, with the, with the flower, with flowers, I'm going to really just do what I want. And I'm just using the picture as a, you know, kind of a reference to understand what the, you know, the physical uh, characteristics of a particular flower are. So, so I'm looking at these and I'm thinking about, okay, they're, they, you know, the basic shape of them, they're basically kind of round, they're kind of, uh, you know, plate or saucer shape. Um, and I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm orienting the flowers. Uh, and if you, you can look at the, the one, the big one to the left is kind of facing to the left. So you're getting, you know, a, a kind of a view of the petals that's not face on. So when I draw it out and when I'm thinking about it, when I'm painting it, I have to keep that in mind. And I'm going to use, you know, the, the idea of force of, uh, you know, the shortened right side of that flower because it's kind of facing towards me. And I see more of the petal on the left side of the flower than on the right side of the flower. So uh, I'm gonna keep that in mind as I draw it out. Uh, but you can kind of see, okay, I got three, three, flat, three main flowers here. And, and if I actually measure them, they're almost exactly the same distance away from each other. And I try never to do that. I try never to have three flowers that are, you know, a perfect triangle or with, you know, three same sides because it just looks too, too canned. So go back to my screen. So I'm going to, I'm going to have three flowers. Um, you know, they say, even when you're like planting shrubs, they say, you know, plant an odd number uh, because it doesn't look quite as, as uh, mechanical, it looks more natural. So I'm gonna do three flowers and I'll, I'll have a few buds floating around the picture as well, but three main flowers. And like I said before, I'm going to, I don't want them in an exact triangle where they're, they're the same distance apart. So I'm gonna just, I'm just going to note the center of the flowers. I'm going to draw this big so you can see it. So I'm going to do one. And let's say, let's say this one's going to be facing me, like almost straight at the viewer. And then I'm going to have one down here that's kind of facing in this direction, down to the, to the right a little bit. And then I'm going to have another one. Let's see, maybe I'll move this one down a little bit. And never mind, we'll just put them up here. Maybe one right about here. And I'm gonna actually have that one kind of facing away from me. So I'm gonna see the back side of the flower. So there's gonna be some overlap between this one here and this one down in the, uh, the bottom section. Um, Notice I don't line them up, you know, on a perfect horizontal, perfect vertical, because that's going to look mechanical too. And then my distances between them are, are different. So that's good. So I got that. So I, I got to, you know, even though it's not random, because I kind of decided where I wanted it, it's kind of a random looking choice. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then, all I'm gonna do is just draw the outside of the flower. And I'm not gonna get very detailed here, but I want a couple of things I wanna think about. A, how much room do I have inside my mat? And I can even put the mat here and draw. So let's just say, 
this one's going to be facing towards me, so it's going to be pretty even all around. <clears throat> and then this one here, this is the center of it, but I'm going to, it's pointing down to the right. So I'm going to see kind of the edge and then the, the and then kind of the outside, and I'm going to see a little bit of the back. That makes sense if you can see that. Okay. And I'm drawing kind of dark here so you can see it. I don't normally draw this dark. Now, this one here, I'm actually, I think I'm going to move it. I'm going to put it up here. Again, I don't want them too different. Okay. It's a little close. So maybe move it over here. All right. And I'm going to have the back side of it. So kind of facing down into the paper and to the right. So if this was the back, I maybe see something like this. Okay. <clears throat> now for the petals. Let's see this. The, let's see, let's think that's, I'm going to think that the bottom of the flower is going to be a little bit closer to me and then the top of the flower. So the petals are going to be kind of in this shape. And just drawing that kind of makes it look like the center of the flower is, is deeper into the paper. Uh, I suppose if I drew the, the lines, the opposite, the opposite arc, it would look like it was the center was kind of sticking out. So it would look you know, um, convex instead of concave. Now this is the opposite. I want it uh, pointing away from me. So I'm gonna draw the lines to make it look that way. Almost like an umbrella. And then this one down here, the same way. And again, I don't, I don't normally draw all of these lines, but I'm just drawing them to kind of represent what, or, you know, Try to indicate to you what I'm thinking in my head. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty good composition right there. It takes up a good portion of the. Now I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have colors around it and such. And these are gonna be white flowers. So I'm gonna do some negative painting to bring out the flowers. Um, so I'm gonna have some darker colors around them, and, and that's pretty good. So I might have maybe like a. Maybe a couple of uh, buds there. Do one up here. I don't know. That may be too much, but we'll see how that goes. All right, now I'm pretty much done with this mat. So I'm going to paint now to the tape. And what that'll allow me to do is it'll, I'll end up with a picture that's a little bigger than the map, but it gives me, a, you know, some adjustment I can make. Just, you know, at, once I'm done, see how it feels. Joe, uh, I might have missed it. How, how large is your paper or what uh, is your is, mat size? This, this is eight by 10. Eight by 10. Okay, thank you. Actually, you drew it a little, a little high, but oh well, that's fine. I'm not going to move it. <laughs> okay. Um, I won't go through the paints. If you, if you really want to know, I can tell you uh, as I go. Uh, I'm using the same brush which I used last time. I have a squirrel mop which I actually got at um, Jerry's Artorama. It was reasonable, which means it was cheap, but still expensive. And then I use these rosemary brushes that I order online. Um, and they're, they're pretty good. They're, these are synthetic. And actually, I, grab, I was going to do a flat, but I don't normally use, but I, I found this in my pile of brushes. It's just a cheap flat brush. Uh, so I'm going to use this as well. And uh, 
And like I said before, I'm going to be doing some negative painting. Actually, excuse me for a second. I'm going to erase some of these lines here. Joe, looking at your palette, and I don't know whether it's because of on Zoom or not, and looking at your colors, I don't see a bright red. Uh, this here like a is, a, is a cad red. That's a, that's a, oh. basically a cad orange. I mean, a cad red, I mean, it even doesn't look that red in my palette because it's dirty. Okay. But, it, but it's, right. a cat, it's a cad red, believe me, it's going to be red, so. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm doing white flowers. And I think this is potting mule paper, rough, well, not rough. Well, I think they actually call it rough, but it's basically cold press. I don't think they have a cold press or maybe they do. I don't know. I can't remember. Any decent paper is good enough. Although I always say that the first thing you spend money on is paper. Nothing harder than painting on lousy paper. All right. So I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to want some, a lot of softness around the flowers. Uh, so I'm actually just going to wet some of the area, not all of it, around it with some clear water because you can't really, you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm not doing the whole thing. And you don't really have to do that. <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to start by putting some color around my flowers. Basically do some negative painting to shape out the flowers. So this one's going to be Facing down. And I'm going to mix my colors. I got blue using a ultramarine blue, some yellow ochre. Uh, cad red, alizarin. Uh, some, probably some cobalt, I mean, uh, some teal colored paint to knock down the red. That's really probably about, and yeah, that's probably about it. Maybe a little uh, violet, not much though. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna paint a, every border of the flower. I'm gonna leave some of the borders unpainted just so, you get some uh, some uh, what you would call uh, you know edges that kind of disappear. It's just kind of a technique that makes it look more interesting. You might hear it called lost edges. I'm just adding in some different colors here. This is all gonna get pretty light, so I'm not too worried about it. I also have my trusty toilet paper. A little red, a little lizarin, some ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue.
I'm feathering it out towards the edge. Kind of making like a background. And if I paint on the flower by mistake, I can use my brush to kind of wipe off the paint, bring back the white. So you can start to kind of see the shape of the flowers now. I'm going to move to inside the flowers and I want, I'm going to want some, some parts darker. So I'll probably make it maybe darker towards the bottom here. Well, actually, maybe I'll have it light in this area because it's kind of, I want it looking more, I want it to be a little closer to me. So I'll make it darker up top and later on the bottom. That'll kind of push the, the top back a little bit and give it some three dimensionality. And this one here, so let's start with that. I'm going to go very watery on this. I don't want it too dark because these are supposed to be white flowers. So, and I'm kind of going to go, I'm kind of brushing in the shape of the petals. You don't really have to do that, but. It helps with the illusion. And I'm using the brush to kind of smooth it out, add some highlights, put the highlights back in. Now this flower here, the center, is right here, but I'm seeing the edge, the back edge, which is going to be a little, it's going to be lighter than everything else. So the inside of the flower is going to be darker. And then this flower, really looking at the back of the flower, I might add a little purple in there too, just to give it a different color. It's kind of behind the big flower in front. So I'm gonna have a stem coming out of that. you'll see the back of the flower and the stem coming out of the back. Again, I'm gonna kind of blend that in so you don't see too much of an edge. I'll highlight this edge when I add some more detail to the back of the flower, so you'll see that. And that's about it on the color of the flower. One thing I've noticed well, for me anyway, especially with doing flowers is you don't want to overdo it. That is, you don't want to, you don't want to keep dabbing because I mean, the flowers are supposed to be kind of delicate. So less is more in this case. All right, so I'm going to let that dry for a minute. I'm going to have to use my hair dryer.
All right, so, I mean, you're getting the sense of that there's flowers there, although you can't really see much at this point. So now I'm gonna add some detail though to the center of the flowers, because again, I wanna keep it, I don't want to overwork the flowers because I want them to look delicate and light, especially since these are white flowers. But even if I was doing color flowers, I, I don't want to go in there too many times. Uh, so I'm gonna work on the detail inside the flower and that's gonna help make it look more like a flower. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like an orange center. Uh, now, again, I'm looking at this flower, the bottom part of the flower is closer to the viewer. And the top of the top of the flower is is farther away. I mean, not much, but a little bit. So, but when I do the center, I kind of want to enforce reinforce that. So I'm going to have I'm kind of orange um, um, seeds, not seeds, but like the nectar area, and then it's going to be darker underneath. So I'm going to put the orange, you know, on this side and the darkness on this side, and that'll give it that, the right look, the right uh, three-dimensional look. So I'm just gonna get some cad orange, actually, you know, a little kind of orange, this is bright orange, a little bit of red, and I'm gonna tone that down with some teal. And I'm just going to add some, some dots here. And then I need something darker. To go underneath. And then I'm just gonna pull some of that color out in the shape of the flower. Not much, just a little bit. That's too much. All right, that's all I'm gonna do with that. I'm gonna do the same thing in this flower. And then again, this time I'm looking sideways. So I'm gonna see some, and here's the middle and the edge of the flower is gonna be kind of blocking it a little bit. So I'm gonna have some orange here. And some more darker color, kind of a long. This outside petal, which is coming up from the back and hiding some of the center of the flower. Again, I'll pull that out. So I'm gonna color out, especially over here, I'm gonna make it a little darker. Okay. Now this flower up here, like I said, I'm going, it's the back side of it, so I'm seeing like a green stem, not the orange middle. So yeah, it's going to be something like a triangle here. Could actually add some blue to it. And, All right. I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow to this back.
actually add a little more shadow to the other flowers too. I want this area to be darker. I'm gonna add some green, just to give it some color. Again, I don't want to overdo it. Maybe the same thing on the bottom right, darken this area here. Not too much worried about the outside edge because I'm gonna better define that. All right. Darken up these centers a little bit more. Like that color, so I'm wiping it off. Start again. Lizarin. Ultramarine blue. Some teal and knock it down a little bit. Red to brown it up a bit. A little hard to see in the video. Let's go add some more color just to make it a little easier for you guys to see. All right, I'm pretty happy with the center. Now these, I'm gonna better define the petals as I'm working on the outside around the flower. So I'm, I'm theoretically kind of done with the inside of the flower. Uh, but like I said, it'll, it'll look more like petals as I work the outside.
going to start working in about two weeks and then we're going to have to come back and try to do it slowly but solidly. That's why I believe in slow jazz and slow jazz and slow jazz. I mean, an unopened song would be a gold cover. I'd want to hear it as well and I can use it to do that. But first, I'm just going to start adding in a lot of said last time, uh, I don't like new phrases for working with dry paint, dry uh, uh, paint wells, that I was learning out of uh, Art Noir and Blue here about has it been sand and wind, because otherwise I, if I did, I would make a huge mess of the way you would paint, dabbing in there and pulling out half a tube, like they used to at Disney World. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to run out of opal here. Gotcha. So maybe I'll start with a little purple. Just so they kind of feel the silhouette. Again, so I'm going to work the edges here. And I want to show the separation of the flowers in front of like the petals and I need some parts to do it with that. I'm trying to go I'm trying to go go as bold as I can. And this will this will lighten up. Now see this this is coming towards me so uh, the flower shouldn't be sticking out. This this is sticking out way too much white. So I'm gonna kind of cut it off here a little bit. Because this distance should be a little shorter than that distance because we're shadowing so Cut that off a little bit. Hope that makes sense. And again, I'm not going to outline the entire flower, just some of it. And I'm going to kind of soften the edge here. Change color a little bit. Uh, let's see, maybe I'll continue it up here. I'm just dipping my brush into the water and rinsing it a little bit and then pulling the color. direction I want to. So it's darker here than out here. Again, if I don't like the shape of the flowers a little too square, I can rub off some of the paint. I'm going to change up the color a little bit, go with some more green. Again, I want to highlight the fact that these are separate petals, putting in a little space in between the two. It's a little bit hard for you to see, but I'm, I kind of drew a line into the flower to make, you know, give the petals a little more shape. Joe, when you're changing colors, do you ever think in terms of uh, warm and cool?
I mean, I do, but not so much in this case. I'm more just thinking about variety. Okay. Um, well, it, it probably just comes naturally. I mean, it, it's kind of, you know, you have your warm and your cools there, but I don't know whether you kind of consciously think about it or it just automatically happens. Yeah, I think it's partly automatic or, or it's partly just like I look at it and go, mm, okay, I want, you know, this color in this area. Uh-huh. It's kind of like the way I think about composition too. It's not like I'm, I'm consciously thinking about a particular composition, you know, uh, uh, idea. It's just I'm, I'm placing stuff on the paper in such a way that I like the way it looks. You know what I mean? Right more of the feel to it. Right, right. I mean, it's essentially what I'm doing, but but I'm doing it based more on feel than, mm -hmm. you know, a calculated saying, okay, I got cool here, I want warm there. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. Shake this for me. Trying to keep some edges soft, some edges hard. And again, I'm, I'm just stepping back and looking at it. I mean, this is off the yellow up here, but it is what it is. Soften this edge. Just trying to shape the flower so it looks right. It looks about right. I think this should have come up a little bit more. I cut this part of the flower off a little too much. So I'm going to try and bring some of it back. All right, so I think I'm done with this side. I'm going to add some color up here, basically the same way, and I'm going to go maybe some green, and some dark green here. Flipping it around so I don't put my hand in wet paint.
again, I'm not going to do the entire flower edge. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, do you still have some of the unopened buds in your composition or no? What's that? The unopened buds. Do you have any of those in your composition still or no? I just can't see very well. Yeah, they're, they're still there. I haven't painted them yet. Okay. Uh, I'll stay tuned. Stay tuned, yeah. My plan is to add them, but okay, see how this is kind of like I have like an even circle. That, I don't like the way that looks. So I need to change something here. I don't know if you see what I mean. I'm, I'm kind of, the, the, the thickness of the dark is pretty much uniform across this whole arc, which I don't like. So I can either expand this side, which I think is what I'll do since this is wet. Soften some of this too. I don't, I don't want a hard, a, a consistent hard edge all the way across. It's just going to look too unnatural. So, so soften just a couple of spots. And it doesn't matter if some of the local color gets on the pedal. That actually makes it look pretty good. So I think anyway. Put my mat on, make sure I'm still kind of in the ballpark here. And so looking at this, I, I feel like the composition's a little bit to the left. So I have these two. I'm going to add a couple of buds over here to kind of help balance it out a little bit. So I'm happy so far. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more color to these two areas and darken them up a little bit. I probably shouldn't. Remember what I said, you want to kind of keep it delicate, but I'm going to give it a shot here. too much. There's something about the shape of this shower. This the shape of this flower is not uh, not right. And I think it's I need to cut off some of this petal here. But it still seems like it's a goofy shape. I can't figure out what it is, though. Yeah. 
Maybe this needs to come around a little bit more. It works. Yeah, I'll leave it for now. All right, I'm going to dry that off. All right, now I'm just going to go in and put in my darkest darks and, and some detail. Pretty much more of the same colors. And again, I don't want dark everywhere, just in some select spots. Joe, what did you use for your dark? I'm still using the same colors, just thicker. Yellow uh -huh. ochre, ultramarine blue for green, uh, and basically uh, alizarin and ultramarine blue for the bluish purple. Throw some teal in there. Throw a little red. Brown it up a little bit. Warm up, warm up the green. Open some of my edges.
All right, I'm going to put in my bulbs here, which is basically just going to be the stem. down here Add a bunch of stems all around. The smaller brush, this is a six. And I'm going to vary the color on the stems too. I mean, some green, some purple, some blue. The hardest part is just being trying to be uh, trying to be random. I got the stem coming out of this flower here. I don't know if anybody else does, but I find that I'm always whistling as I work. Should have been a dwarf, I guess. I had the Star Wars theme song stuck in my head. <laughs> oh, no. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. And I had about as much reason to have it in my head as you, you guys do. So just saying. <laughs> Terrible. Stems from these flowers too. I'm just arbitrarily throwing in some lines here to just create some I don't some know, Joe, I, I think you have a pretty steady hand there. <laughs> yeah. Also want to draw some lines that kind of go behind the flowers to give it that, you know, kind of give it that three-dimensional look where it looks like stuff is overlapping.
So that's probably a, enough. I'm just gonna add a few more, just darken up the inside of the flower one more time here. Let's get this back. I want the center of those flowers that really pop. All right. Darkness. Yeah, with the darks, I'm just mixing thicker paint. I'll, I'll even like wick off my brush, get the water out of it. All right, I think I'm gonna call it quits. Quit while I'm ahead. See where I want to sign it. Darken this up just a little bit more. Somehow I don't like those, but Well, thank you everybody for sticking with me. All right, so I'm center my mat, figure out where I want to sign. I'm going to sign down the bottom. Here. There we go. Well, it's gorgeous. And you made it look so easy. <laughs> I agree. I sent you a message in chat. I have to fly. Sorry. I saw. Thank you. 
still the shape of this flower is bothering me. I don't know what it is. But I'm done. Wow. Wow. Nice. Very, very nice. Beautiful. Yeah, flower, flowers are a nice subject because it really allows you to be so free with the watercolor, I think. Mm. Hmm. I mean, in this, I mean, in these, in this sense, it's basically as long as you outline the flower and make it, you know, the right shape, it's going to look like a flower. So. Well, you pick, you know, a nice blend of uh, hard and soft edges. And I guess that's part of the trick too. Yeah, def definitely. Like I, you know, said several times, you, you know, you don't want to just outline the entire flower because it's it's going to look like you just outlined it right right so like here's it's, it's kind of this is a you know definitely a totally lost edge just no edge here at all and the only edge yeah. you can actually see is from the pencil and it works yeah. i mean it works that it's yeah yeah and here it's it's so kind of a obscure. soft edge so, but then i have yeah. the hard edges hard edges too so 